Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kate Graham, and I'm the Senior Program Officer for the Challenge Initiative based in Baltimore, and it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you. We truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us today. A few months back, the six-day survey Services high impact approach was among the top 15 stories selected by the WHO and regionally disseminated. And today we're going to delve deeper and see if it is possible or is it possible to increase family planning users in a few months. Well, let's find out. So before we get started, we're going to go over today's agenda. Over the next hour, you will hear from my colleagues on their experiences implementing six day services approach followed by a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. Next slide, thanks. Um, and we've enabled our questions feature. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation, just pop them in there. And if you miss anything, don't worry, we'll send around a recording once it is available. And to ensure that you're paying attention, we will have a poll coming up soon. So get prepared. Um, to learn more about real life experiences implementing HIPS, please click the link here on this slide, as well as download the handle handouts that will be available. Next slide. So I'm sure you're all eagerly waiting to know if it is possible to increase family planning users in a few months. And the answer is yes. From the beginning of implementation in 2016, the annual client volume across all 31 TCI cities has increased on average by 79% because of the high impact interventions such as fixed day services. TCI supported cities have also shown a significant increase in family planning client volume at the UPHC level as well. So in today's webinar, we will deliberate how FDS has contributed to ensuring resource allocation, improved family planning commodity supply and quality assurance, and, cl and client satisfaction across 514 UPHCs in 31 cities across U Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha. Next slide. Today you will hear from our esteemed presenters, which include Mahin Malik, the Director of Field Operations in Baltimore, Hitesh Sani, the Deputy Chief of Party in TCI India, Amit Kumar, the Senior Implementation Lead, TCI India, Samarendra Bahara, the State Lead, TCI India, and Deepti Mathur, the Technical Learning Lead in TCI India. And as I mentioned, that we will be testing your knowledge before we get started. So we're gonna start with a quick poll. What we'd like you to do is, once the poll comes up, to please select the, cre the correct sequence for the, six the fixed day service approach for spacing method. The four critical steps of FDS are, are displayed on this slide. However, they are not arranged in any order. So what we'd like you to do is just take a moment to select the letter which best corresponds to the correct sequence of these steps. We'll give you about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll display the answers. So good luck on that. All right, I'm seeing about 35% of you saying you think it's A. So far, 25% think B, 28% C. It's a close, it's a close call. We'll give you a few more seconds. So we have about 44% of you that have voted. So just a few more seconds, if you wanna take a shot at this. Okay, let's show the correct answer. 
And the correct answer is C. So 27% of you have guessed it correct. So the correct sequence in rolling out an FDS approach is to schedule, to prepare the facility, to coach and mentor, and then to mobilize the community. So it's really great to see that 27% of you already know the correct sequence. So really great job. Um, and congratulations and thanks for taking that poll with us. So with that, I would like to now invite Mahin Malik to talk about TCI and its business unusual tenants. Mahin, over to you. Thank you, Kate. Um, hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Mahin and I'm the Director of Field Operations at the Challenge Initiative. Next slide, please, Kate. Um, we'll be briefly talking about what the Challenge Initiative is. So launched in 2016, the Challenge Initiative addresses a critical development challenge, how to sustainably scale up high impact interventions that have been shown to be effective in similar geographies. TCI was designed to support local governments to sustainably scale up evidence-based high impact family planning interventions, both horizontally through adding more cities and geographies and vertically through institutionalization and making them part of the government system. This is done using a highly leveraged challenge fund mechanism. The local governments had to self-select to be part of the challenge initiative demonstrate their commitment by bringing their own financial and human resources to the table, and then they lead the implementation of these high-impact interventions. In return, these local governments can avail themselves of the T Challenge Initiatives Challenge Fund and technical assistance or coaching to support implementation of high-impact intervention. TCI has packaged them into easy to use toolkits that provide guidance and other support through the innovative TCI University. TCI has so far rapidly scaled up to 109 geographies across the 11 countries, which include India, Senegal, Benin, Burkina Faso, Kodiwar, Niger, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and Philippines. <clears throat> um, and that this, through these 11 countries and the cities within these 11 countries, um, there's a total population coverage of 110 million. TCI has made a significant progress in strengthening local government systems. And the local governments have, have been able to pledge their own money in addition to the donor money to scale up and implement these high impact interventions. Next slide. The Challenge Initiative provides evidence-based solutions for family planning scale, cost-effective impact and sustainability guided by six principles. That is being demand-driven as cities have to self-select to participate in the Challenge Initiative. Focus on coaching, not technical assistance, which is doing. Design program based on evidence-based intervention instead of conducting pilots emphasize adaptive management approaches using near to real-time qualitative and quantitative data, and leverage existing government and community systems and structures for efficiency at scale. This near real-time data includes data from directly the government's data system, which is the HMIS. And then there are project records that are collected regularly by the local governments, and they are encouraged to use this information for decision-making. Next slide, please. Um, at the Challenge Initiative, we strongly believe that their um, scale, impact, cost efficiency, and sustainability are the four interlocking tenets. And we believe that scale without impact is empty scale. Impact at scale without increasing cost efficiency is not viable. And cost efficient impact at scale that is not sustainable will not produce lasting changes. We have achieved this scale when many cities have, have started to implement the TCI business model. It's 109 cities across the 11 countries which are implementing. The change in the health outcomes in the cities that implement TCI is measured through both qualitative and quantitative measures. 
there, is, there definitely has come in efficiency as these are being implemented. And the challenge initiative along with the local governments do look at what the cost for the beneficiary is to the donor and cost for the beneficiary to the city government. Um, the sustainability is measured through a tool which has been created by the Challenge Initiative, which is called a RAISE tool, Reflection and Action to Increase self Efficiency and Implants. Um, next slide. After almost six years of, um, the, it first started as the Urban Reproductive Health Initiative, which then ended in 2015, and then Gates Foundation envisioned a scale and sustainability platform to build on its success. It was then changed into the Challenge Initiative. TCI adapted and packaged URI's best practice within an online platform called the TCI University. So the local governments with technical coaching and some funding from TCI could use their own resources to implement them for impact and sustainability at scale. TCI University includes not only its co uh, approach to coaching, but also a community of practice and online easy to use and adaptive toolkits that house its high impact best practice intervention. Next slide. There, um, as of June thirtieth, we have nearly five thousand registered users on the challenge on the TCI University, and have created six AT family planning and AYSRH toolkits that are available for local context. Trained almost one thousand seven hundred and twenty nine coaches and held three thousand coaching sessions just in one year. In addition, the community of practice is extremely vibrant, both in person and virtually. Um, there are five AVISRX specific webinars with subject matter experts and nine hub specific webinars on key practices. These are the different high impact interventions that are implemented by the Challenge Initiatives hubs, which are in East Africa, that includes Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, uh, Francophone, which includes Senin, ben Senegal, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, um, India, and Nigeria. And we also have recently launched a new hub in Philippines. There are these high impact interventions are have been selected and adapted that suit the best needs for the local context. In East Africa, the high impact interventions being implemented include the whole site orientation, integrated community outreaches, integrated in reaches, postpartum family planning, advocacy for increased support, community health workers, and pharmacy engagement. Of these, the highlighted ones are the ones that also match the international best practices. In Francophone, it is a universal referral, fixed day service, demand generation, community health workers, postpartum family planning, and use of mass media. In Nigeria, we have in reaches, whole site orientation, advocacy at the national, subnational level, use of media to generate demand, uh, PPMVs, which are similar to uh, pharmacies and drug shops across um, the other countries, social mobilization. In India, it is the male engagement, the urban ashas, planning and budgeting, nutrition days and outreach services, in addition to the fixed day static services. You will be hearing more about the fixed day specific services in a few minutes. Next slide. And with this, I hand over to Hitesh Sihani, who will be speaking more about the fixed day service. Over to you, Hitesh. Thank you, Mahim, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm Hitesh Sahani, Deputy Chief of Party for TCIHC at PSI India. So it's my pleasure today presenting to you all on FDF and how it was a game changer as this approach got uh, selected for the WHO IBP award. As we rejoice uh, in the contribution made by this approach, and the celebration increases manifold when we see it adorn the pages of uh, WHO IBP gallery. Let me share a little background uh, behind the journey of FDF in terms of how it made it to the WHO implementing best practice. 
Uh, so uh, WHO had announced uh, a first of its kind uh, competition in 2020, wherein entries were invited on uh, implementation experiences from the organizations across the globe. And amongst uh, the 110 entries that reached the WHO IBP, one was from uh, TCIHC India uh, on FTS best practice. Uh, WHO, after rigorous selection exercise, later announced that uh, TCIHC's India entry is one of the 15 entries uh, that will get a place amongst the famous WHO high impact interventions. We also learned that TCIHC's entry was the only one selected from India. So, a proud moment for the entire TCI family. Uh, next slide, please. So as Maheen uh, just detailed a while ago that uh, TCI approach is built on strengthening the primary care for family planning, which means uh, bringing quality family planning access closer to the urban poor by positioning government in the driver's seat. So towards scaling up of uh, FDS approach, most importantly, TCI coached the service providers and health leaders across the value chain, that is everyone from community frontline workers to health leadership as reflected here in the slide. Uh, so we started by seeking buy-in from the chief medical officer for a few ready to start uh, uh, facilities or UPSCs and which were selected to demonstrate uh, their ability to provide high quality family planning choices for clients once a week on a fixed day. Uh, through the city governance officials, uh, resources like uh, trained uh, human staff, supplies, equipment uh, for that particular day were pooled. Thereafter, the coaching of uh, medical officers in charge for facility preparation and connecting uh, the district quality assurance committee uh, with the UPSCs and ensuring its visit on the day of FDS to bring a mark of quality. Uh, uh, besides this, ASHA ANMs were coached on devising a, a family planning due list uh, based on age and parity uh, and further demonstrated them on uh, how to prioritize uh, the family planning clients uh, during routine household visits. In fact, uh, creating a FP due list elevated uh, family planning among the ASHA's uh, competing priorities and uh, turned out to be a magic innovator as never before ASHA's new denominators for the family planning clients and uh, who and when to prioritize. Um, uh, therefore, by fixing a calendar, uh, facility readiness, uh, coaching uh, and mentoring and community mobilization, successful FDS happened uh, at the selected facilities. Uh, next slide. So uh, we just learned that coaching through demonstration is a critical strategy as uh, coaching strengthens both uh, the technical and the managerial capacities of uh, health system staff. Also, this helps to establish coaches uh, within the system who further lead the scale up of uh, FDS approach across all facilities uh, in SCP. Uh, these efforts uh, resulted in gains uh, made in terms of uh, uh, increased client volume, increased uh, uh, method choices, uh, that is the basket of choice. So FDS uh, started uh, which actually started in a staggered manner from quick to start facilities as it was demonstrated by the TCI in only two to three percent of the facilities and this success uh, uh, quickly scaled up. In fact, in a matter of uh, six months to within a year, all 390 plus facilities in UP and uh, in fact, uh, more than 500 facilities in combined in all the three states that is UP, MP and Orissa had regularized uh, weekly FDS. Uh, uh, so let us see, in fact, uh, the gain in the client volume uh, in the next slide. Next slide. So TCI's uh, FDS uh, high impact approach in UP 
uh, contributed to 82% increase in annual uh, family planning client volume as on March 2020, as we compared to the baseline or uh, in terms of actual numbers, nearly 150,000 more clients uh, accessing the family planning care. Uh, the UPSC proportion of uh, the family planning clients increased substantially, uh, thereby indicating the strength in the family planning services at the primary care centers. Uh, besides this, um, uh, the, the results from the two rounds of population-based surveys informed that the modern contraceptive prevalence rate uh, uh, among the currently married uh, women in the poor areas of the city increased significantly from 49.8% to uh 53.7 percent uh, in the round two which was done exactly the uh, year later that is september 2019. Uh, so i'm sure that this uh, empirical evidence from india will help you decide to include this approach in your cities and your country uh, and to give you further evidence from the field, uh, we have Amit Kumar, who has uh, uh, worked extensively with the Saharanpur city. Over to Amit uh, to share his experience of coaching and working on this approach. Uh, thank you, Hitesh. Uh, I am Amit Kumar, uh, Senior Implementation Lead with TCIC India Hub. And uh, I am here to share my experience of Saharanpur city. Here is the little bit information about the city. 26% uh, of the district population is urban and out of which 50% uh, resides in slum. Uh, in February 2018, when TCIC started operations in Saharanpur, uh, the cases of Varanasi and Firozabad were presented before uh, the CMO. These, these were the cities where FDS was yielding excellent results. Uh, the CMO, along with his cabinet, welcomed the HIA and asked uh, TCIC to demonstrate the same in few facilities out of the total 17 urban uh, primary facilities. To enumerate further the journey, uh, let me read this quote from the urban health coordinator, Dr. Munawar from Saharanpur. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, according to the urban health coordinator, uh, family planning was the last thing on anyone's mind at our urban primary health centers. However, after observing and participating in the special FDS drive in 2018, facilitated by PSI, PCIC, I saw people coming in for family planning services. And from that day onward, we are regularly organizing FDS across all 17 UPSCs, uh, August 2018 onward. So evidently the increased demand of uh, Family planning by organizing FDS Day uh, really created champions within the system, not only the urban health coordinator, uh, but the facility staff from UPSs like medical officers in charge became the advocates of FDS as a mean to increase access to information and voluntary FP on both fixed days and routine days. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide is about uh, the city situation before and after TCS intervention. Here we can distinctly see the transition in the processes of different parameters such as availability of equipment, record keeping, quality improvement, capacity building of providers, and of course the initiation of long acting reversible methods for the clients from a few urban primary health facilities to all 17 facilities. Uh, we can clearly see from this slide that the before TCIC intervention, QI committees were not formed and FDS was not happening in any of the facilities. Now we can see the change after TCIC intervention where uh, all facilities have QI committees, all 17 facilities and the FDS is being conducted across all primary health facilities. So uh, this was the changes we observed over a period of time. Next slide, please. So this slide talks about how uh, the client volume changed in the city. We observed the increase in demand uh, led to increased choices for women and how improved processes led to increase in client base. Here you can see the HMIS trend that show a 758% increase in the client volume at the primary facility level from the baseline. So moreover, there is visible rapid increase of short acting reversible method 
including injectable contraceptive and of course significant increase in iud also uh, and the reason behind this is the repeated occurrence of fds that has widened the choices of family planning for urban poor especially women the women choice uh, to accept iud injectable made it uh, apparent that the choices were long desired by the women in the community so this was from my side thank you so much for paying attention to our field implementation story i hope uh, uh, it has enamored you now i invite uh, samrinder behra uh, who is a state implementation lead for tcic and uh, uh, he he will help us to understand how this particular approach builds the block of the system thank you so much over to you samrinder thank you amit those were great insights once again welcome everyone uh, myself samrendra behra state lead for tcsc at psi india and i will share how fds strengthens the overall health system next slide please in 2017 i remember when tcsc started the government had a mindset that oh fds well it is for permanent methods only it cannot happen in urban areas at that time even nwhm national urban health mission was also in nascent stages we were business unusual we rapidly studied the system the facilities and identified gaps there appeared areas that required strengthening is at the demand level we identified that community health workers are clueless about who is a family planning client and how to reach them on the supply side at places supplies of commodities were very irregular equipments was either unavailable or non functional or had been lying unused with regards to the favorable environment in many places the providers were untrained or had been out of practice next slide please we approached the system with the codified fds approach and asked them to allocate only a few percentage of facilities where we can demonstrate how it can work it was in varanasi and firozabad that we were given four urban primary health centers by the chief medical officer of varanasi as per pmis report the de de demonstration at four sites of varanasi and firozabad resulted in long acting and reversible contraceptives contribution between 61% to 95% in the total fp uptake of that particular upsc in that particular month and we all learned a while ago that coaching through demonstration is a critical strategy as it strengthens both the technical and managerial capacities of staffs within the health system next slide please so let us take a look at how the fds build the blocks of the system and that includes the first one is estimating the right resource requirement through mapping and listing the second is boosting demand by coaching community health worker on prioritization third capacity building of providers on method mix fourth strengthening supply chain management fifth quality improvement sixth is leveraging pip for optimal utilization of the resources and seventh is seeking additional resources through pip eighth timeliness and correctness of data for decision making and the ninth is building leadership skills in each cadre and the last one is improved governance to summarize the fds approach increases access and availability of high quality family planning services including long acting reversible contraceptives for women of reproductive age 15 to 49 with the increase in demand the system has to respond by equipping its providers with the latest skills by ensuring supplies ensuring resources through its budget provision in pip by improving quality of services at each level so that 
a provider a community health worker can perform and that motivates them and builds leadership skills in them as well now let us take a look at those elements or we can say mantras that if replicated can give similar results irrespective of the country state or city now i invite dipti mathur technical lead for program learning to share those mantras over to dipti thank you thank you samrinj i'm sure our audiences have picked up enough clues from the building blocks that can strengthen their systems we are almost at the conclusion of the webinar i'm deepthi mathur technical lead for program learning at tcihc implemented by psi in india next slide please i would like to reemphasize that pixte sarik approach is a global high impact intervention results from hmis population surveys PMIs have all pointed towards its promise to deliver quality assured services on a fixed day at an assured facility. FDS at UPHCs ensures the availability of high quality family planning care, including long acting spacing methods on a fixed day and time known to the community. It is a collaborative effort to empower the government in providing health care through the medical officer in charges, staff nurses, and ANMs posted at the urban primary health centers. For a successful FDS, we recommend following the four steps listed in the IBP implementation story or the codified approach available at tciurbanhealth.org. Keeping in mind the following mantras, select and set one day a week when assured high quality family planning will be provided at urban primary health centers or establish a calendar. Equip urban primary health centers with trained human resources, equipment, and supplies for FDS days or facility readiness. Coach community health workers on how to prepare a client prioritization FP dual list through coaching and mentoring. Publicize FDS days through community health workers as widely as possible and mobilize communities on FDS days. So these are the mantras that the India have followed, which we feel that other have also follow will give similar or same results. Next slide, please. Well, over time, has urban primary facilities institutionalized regular FDS days and served increasing number of clients? They started procuring equipment for themselves, getting providers trained as part of projects advocacy efforts. Thus, UPSCs became a sustainable ecosystem where demand and supply became happily married. So before we conclude, on behalf of TCIC India Hub and the entire staff of PSI India, I would like to thank Maheen Malik, Kate Graham from our Donor Gates Institute for enthusiastically participating and facilitating today's webinar. Thanks to the leadership at Gates Institute and other colleagues who have supported this initiative, BNGF and USAID for showing faith in us to scale up proven solutions. The credit of creating the FDS magic goes to 2,500 plus staff of 500 facilities where TCIHC coached and supported them. Much thanks to National Health Mission UP, the State Division of Family Planning, City Health Leadership led by Chief Medical Officers, Nodal Officers, and Urban Health Coordinators. And most of all, to our foot soldiers, the community health workers who learned quickly and took FDS to these heights. This webinar cannot end without thanking WHO IBP, who chose India's FDS for spacing methods at UPHCs out of the 110 global entries and supported us in disseminating it. On behalf of TCIC India Hub, I thank all of you who have joined us from various cities and hubs. Your enthusiastic participation motivates us to do even better. Thank you so much. Over to you, Kate. Thank you, Deep D and panelists for taking us through your experiences with FDS. I know this was a very quick snapshot into the experiences, the data that you're seeing, the great results, the impact. So it's, it's very exciting to see. And again, if you want to learn more, you can go to TCI University. The team has uploaded many how-to videos that it can take you through the process. You can learn about what's been happening through the news 
on TCI University. So there's a, a lot of great information there as well as what the team has shared with you today. So with that, we'd like to take some time for questions and answers. And we have a few in the chat box so far. So if you have any questions that are coming to your mind, please enter them there. So the first question asks about what TCI has learned that works best to reach adopters or implementers to gauge interest in this opportunity. Um, they understand that you know, this is a self-selection process, but what are you doing to initiate conversations among the adopters and implementers? So, especially with their, given there are so many competing priorities. So with that, I will hand that over to the team to take that question. Um, hi, Kate. Hi. Hi. So, um, um, so can you repeat the question once more, please? Sorry. Of course. And this can probably be for Mukesh. But what have you learned that works best to reach the implementers? And with the understanding that this is a self-selection process, how are you engaging those the the different folks that you're working with what given the competing priorities that everyone is experiencing it's so uh, this is mukesh and uh, let me answer this question and kate and um, i mean as kate mentioned that uh, there is a very uh, systematic process adopted by government to uh, ensure that uh, there is a demand driven uh, process of city selection and that includes uh, many of the you know uh, uh, criteria for cities to come forward and uh, put their uh, interest as well as uh, as well as resources on table so it means if a city is having a very good political commitment uh, resources on table uh, uh, their systems are ready and and uh, uh, planning indicators are on the lower side and their potential size of impact then city is there to you know receive support from uh, tci <clears throat> coaching and mentoring and that helps city officials and state officials to make a plan for the uh, city and for urban population. And uh, this type of situation helped uh, keeping family planning in prioritization list of government and all other stakeholders in the city. Having said that, if you have 10, 12 or 20 uh, uh, health, health dimensions to work with, family planning started getting you know, preferences based on the data and interest of the city government officials. So that helps I'll help a lot in terms of uh, getting resources and getting program implemented and helping women to adopt a method of their choice. Thank you. And this, this is Maheen. Following up on what Mukesh said, probably the question is um, also how do we, because people have to self-select. So the self-selection that I mentioned is more for the cities to self-select to be part of the challenge initiative. And then it is through the <clears throat> city government that the UPSC is what Mukesh was mentioning, that these um, public and private healthcare facilities are engaged into implementing the high impact interventions. There too, definitely there has to be an appetite to be part of it, to implement and own this whole process. But the self-selection that I mentioned refers more to cities and the um, government to be part of the challenge initiative. Thanks, Mahim, and thank you, Mukesh. And Mukesh, there's another question. Um, we talked about client volume and the increase that we've seen thus far, but can you also talk about the CYP increase and if you've seen that to be commensurate? Yeah, sure, Kate. So, uh, I mean, it, it it's always good to see that how uh, annual client volume is increasing. And with the uh, coaching support from uh, TCI, I mean, from the Gates Institute, uh, we also uh, introduced the system of you know having uh, client volume to be counted that how it is going up or down based on the uh, uh, community choice and individual choice but at the same time it's always good to look at the uh, method mix like I, what is the uh, uptake of iucd or uptake of condom or pills and or sterilization male or female or injectable service and all and and dilys and cyps are calculated based on all these and good part is that if the facilities are available near to the communities. Uh, their method choices, choices are available on the facilities and they can choose a method of their choice and they can choose a facility of their choice to receive the method. The CYP increases. 
So Anwar client volume is directly linked with the uh, a couple year of protection, and we we adopted the uh, global standard calculating CYPs like 120 condoms for one user or 15 OCP cycle oral contraceptive cycle for one uh, uh, OCP user, and similarly for IUCD uh, uh, injectable and and sterilization. And the results are really really good. So we have some internal and external surveys for the projects. For example, in India. The output tracking survey says that there was increase of 3.7 percentage point in a year time among uh, urban poor communities in terms of increasing modern contraceptive prevalence and if you calculate this in the numbers and see why it's very very on the higher side it's good to see that animal plant volume is increasing method choice is increasing cyp is increasing and dailies are increasing thank you thanks mukesh and because i have you in the hot seat i'll ask you another one so there's another question about, you know, they're thanking us for or thanking you for the, the strategies that you've shared, but really wanting to know a little bit more about what strategies specifically you, you use to increase uptake of IUCDs. Okay, so, uh, okay, let me answer this in a very uh, short two, three lines. So for mm -hmm. any of the uh, family planning uh, methods, because method is the community choice, you know, they have to, as per the India government policy, and there is no target for the family planning and community has to decide, I mean, women or men have to decide that which method they want to adopt for their family planning use. So, so uh, if there is uh, demand aggregation there, means community is aware that which type of uh, methods are available near to their communities, that is one, so demand aggregation is very important. Second is a supply. If if uh, there is a demand, where is the supply? Is, is it available near their uh, communities? And third is enabling environment. Enabling environment means like, you know, if you have, I mean, I mentioned that if you have 20, 22 health dimensions to work with, with the same health infrastructure in pu public and private, how family planning is being prioritized through decision-making process, through coaching, through mentoring, through, you know, um, supplies and all. So all these things help women to choose a method of their choice. And if IUCD is increasing, it means it's very, it very clearly shows in uh, uh, in our data that if you are focusing more on uh, you know uh, uh, providing messaging to uh, young and low parity uh, women, the their acceptance towards uh, spacing method is on the higher side. So IUCD injectable, all these things gets increased if they have method choice and they have in more information on that. So these I mean demand aggregation, supply, and enabling environment helped a lot. For all the methods specifically i see thank you kate thanks mukesh all right so we we talked about a lot of the work that we've done um and and i think some of the the folks would like to know what you've experienced during covid so the question is is there any data and how it could be sustained post covid um you know with folks being unable to access family planning, are there any insights that you can share? And I'll go ahead and hand that to Hitesh. Your experiences during COVID and post-COVID. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Kate. I think, uh, uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, uh, as uh, so I'll start with, you know, as the ASHAs and the frontline workers already uh, you know, were coached and they were already ready with their uh, urban health index register, uh, the family planning clients line listing and all those things were ready. However, when COVID hit the country, uh, it hit hard and there were lockdowns and the providers and staff were uh, immediately deployed into COVID related tasks. So there was an initial dip, but however, there were quick learnings. And because the system itself uh, was quite ready in terms of the providers and the staff, uh, so what happened was, you know, uh, when the second wave actually hit uh, in 2021, we see the actual numbers of the family planning acceptors and clients going up rather than going down. And how it happened was that uh, uh, because uh, the frontline health workers had the uh, the the line listing of the clients and they were coached that while working for COVID related tasks they were already in the communities so while working in the communities uh, for the COVID related task they were also meeting and uh, providing the uh, methods uh, though the short term methods only for the providers 
so uh, so there was a kind of a, a method choice queue uh, that happened uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, the facilities uh, even were closed at times and uh, uh, some of the uh, other methods uh, clinical methods could not be given that time but then uh, during the second wave what actually happened was that the uh, the number of uh, clients and the acceptors did increase and uh, though as i said it was for a short term because the frontline healthcare workers actually reached the community and served uh, the communities uh, with the family planning methods uh, of their choice uh, so i hope i have answered this so yes initially there was a slight uh, setback but uh, immediately after that uh, uh, the things got resurrected and the family planning uh, methods of choice uh, uh, during the second wave actually increased. Thanks, Atash, for sharing some of your Can I yeah. add a line here? Can I yeah. add a line here, Kit? Yes, just, just one line from which we learned from the COVID-19 first wave. And uh, it requires little uh, mindset, uh, mindset change and mindset shift among the stakeholders because uh, whatever is happening, even if it's lockdown, even if it's a COVID-19 situation, but sex was happening. So we have to keep always in mind that if something is happening, there has to be some solutions. And that that uh, mindset shift uh, through coaching and mentoring worked really well during the COVID-19 uh, uh, second wave. And you can see the uh, data in India, especially the cities where TCI is working, TCI is working, and the uh, nearby city, that how family planning was increased even at that crisis situation. Because it was a very great mindset change mind, I mean, mindset change among the stakeholders who are doing the supply and demand action all for family plan and that helped thanks mukesh and yes sex was happening during covid after covid so thanks for sharing those strategies um and when you talk about your coaching and mentoring can you talk a little bit more about what what kind of methods that you're that you're using that have really helped that you've seen? Okay, so let me, uh, yeah. So Kate, I'm, I'm answering this and Hitesh, Devika, you can add, add to this. So uh, there are different type of uh, coaching and mentoring model uh, in the PCIC supported cities, because you know, uh, uh, who is driving? Driver, driver is always a uh, government and private sector and other stakeholders in the uh, cities and the state because projects will come and project will go, but sustainability always has to be on the uh, entry strategy. So we focused on that and our coaching model uh, ensured that how coaching is happening at the different level. Different level means if, if you select uh, states, what the, what the coaching happening, which type of people at the state level, especially on the decision-making, fund um, allocation, uh, uh, planning allocation, planning approval, and all these things, fund and all these things. And when you go to the city level, then you have a, a, a great people working there in the government, like chief medical officer, assistant chief medical officer, urban health officer, family planning officer, and all these people. So how you are uh, creating the master coaches within the city, so that city is taking a decision and further coaching to the uh, uh, next level of staff to keep family planning in priority and to ensure that demand is there and supply is there and people are adapting of their method of choice. And the third layer was the community level workers, where uh, workers are going house to house, telling them based on their need that what are the methods available and where the methods are available in public and private sector. So this coaching helped uh, uh, everyone to understand that why family planning is important and how family planning is linked with other health services. And the second coaching model is uh, uh, our TCI University, our uh, uh, online coaching models, like we have WhatsApp groups, coaching groups, community of practice groups, and uh, uh, utilizing different type of case studies and case stories from different cities where government has proved that how they are coaching and mentoring uh, 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 next level of staff to keep family planning prioritized. Hitesh and Devika, if you want to add. Yeah, Mukesh, thanks. I think you covered mostly everything. Just to add, uh, probably, uh, you know, in terms of approach and tools, uh, we started initially with uh, the lead assist observe model that is uh, when the program was leading uh, and uh, uh, 
and the staff was getting uh, coached and, and then we moved to the assessed wherein uh, the staff was capable to do most of the things uh, themselves in terms of uh, you know uh, execution and implementation and uh, lastly moving to the observed stage when we actually felt that you know uh, they are self relying and uh, the tools that were used were say a two by two matrix which clearly very easy uh, a dashboard kind of a thing which clearly depicts uh, uh, the user non user and uh, also in terms of uh, uh, what method user there so you can see that kind of a thing and that aggregates up to the city levels right from a one single slum of an asha so you know as you move up the ladder uh, anyone can so uh, moic at a facility level can see an aggregate for the entire uh, upsc and another tool uh, which gives a very good insight is uh, a raise tool uh, and these all the tools actually help to make uh, a action plan to to actually see uh, and uh, what are the areas that need coaching and uh, they they actually help uh, in devising the strategy and then leading to the next implementation of the action plans thank you thanks atash and thank you mukash all right so we have a few other questions um one question is about how you map family planning problems in your area and how do you mobilize the community to actively participate in the program and I just wanted to make a plug again that the TCA University does have a mapping and listing um, high impact approach and kind of tools that will give you a little bit more information, but uh, just want to make that plug. So I will hand that over to Hitesh or Mukesh. Kate, uh, sorry, I, I missed that. Sorry for yeah, that. So the question is about how you map family planning program problems in your area and how you mobilize the community to actively participate. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll attempt and then request Mukesh and Devika to add as well. So, uh, you know, uh, when Asha's, as I just said that, uh, you know, when Asha's were coached uh, basically on the uh, family planning, uh, there were a couple of apprehensions even to start the conversations and uh, uh, their knowledge about the family planning methods and uh, then the inhibitions that uh, the communities have. So when once ASHAs were coached and the, the, the model that we initially took was lead assist observe wherein uh, you know there was an assistance to ASHA once she was communicating. However, it further graduated to the assist and observe mode. So uh, there were uh, initial innovations, but then mostly, you know, uh, once once the ASHA was able to converse uh, clearly in terms of uh, how family planning approaches uh, and adoption by the communities help uh, to have a proper spacing in terms of uh, between two children and also how it helps the women to maintain her health and uh, how these methods are uh, are very safe uh, and the facilities nearby were offering services Th those all uh, the uh, components worked in synergistic way with each other and actually helped you know for a client mobilization easy because you know now the services were actually much near to the client uh, so if, if a facility was not having a choice for an, an injectable earlier in urban uh, in UP, uh, now there is an injectable in urban PHP. So, so the clients do not have to go to a district level facility and create a clutter there. So a decongestion and for something which is so simple, I think uh, uh, that is how those things worked uh, when client realized also the ease of access and and their knowledge was also improved through the asha conversation in the companies these these challenges got mitigated there mukesh or devika if you can add so uh, i wanted to add a point here am i audible please yes yeah so uh, adding on to what hitesh said i am devika here and uh, i am um, an implementation lead in the tcic project so to add on to uh, what my colleague just said 
so in uh, india is at a very transitional phase with respect to family planning many states are already at replacement level fertility rate so if you look at uttar pradesh uh, the non users are actually highly dispersed they are not concentrated at one you know at a particular location it's not that you go into a slum and you find non users and the other point is that the non users are also probably uh, at a certain age factor so for example if you look at young first time parents there the unmet need is very high and therefore tcic's high impact approach of mapping and listing is actually a key needle mover in terms of mobilizing clients to the ups so it is very very important that frontline health workers asha in our case really map and list the communities are able to segregate you know uh, women and young couples as users non users users of short term methods users of long term long acting methods and identify those pockets in the slums where there is a higher unmet need and i think that's the strategy that we are uh, advancing in our scale up and i think that's an important criteria for programmers to remember as we go forward thank you thank you so much devika okay well i think we've come to there were a few other questions but i believe we've addressed those already um, but if you have any remaining questions do let us know you're you're welcome to reach out to us and ask more questions as they come to you and again please check out tca university to see um, all the different high impact approaches that we have as well as the fixed day services specifically and before we close just a reminder that this webinar has been recorded so you will have the opportunity to listen again and just in case you forgot anything um, welcome to listen to it again as well as um, the other IVP and other WHO websites for you to check out the other experience, uh, the other stories. And with that, I really just want to thank all of you so much for taking the time to hear about our experience in India for the FDS approach. We're really happy that you participated today. And thank you again to all of the presenters, all of my colleagues. You did a fantastic job. So thank you all. <laughs>